What up, my mathletes? This is your host, Mr. Bergman, coming to you live from Chapter 3.1, Graphs of Equations. So the way I'm going to record this is that um, I'm just going to take a little bit of time to explain, and then if you need to pause in order to, to have more time to copy down what you see, then that's fine. I'm expecting you to pause this video. I'm expecting you to take the time to copy down what you see because it uh, doesn't need very much explaining, uh, especially to Algebra 2 students, because most of you have seen this before. So, graph and label the points. You've got negative 3, comma 5. It goes negative 3 to the left and then up 5. 4, comma 3 goes to the right 4 and up 3. Not to be confused with 3, comma 4, which goes over 3 and up 4. Uh, 0, 4 goes left to right 0 and then up 4. Negative 3, 0, 0. And then uh, one thing to keep in mind is that this is these are called ordered pairs because you've got two numbers that are paired together. The first one is the x-coordinate, sometimes called the abscissa, and then the second one is the y-coordinate, sometimes called the ordinate. Pause it if you don't have it completely copied down, but otherwise we'll just move on. Uh, example number two, determine where, whether each ordered pair is a solution of, and they give the equation. So all you got to really do is take these numbers and plug them in. And what you see is that negative 5 comma 7, when you plug it into here, negative 5, and 7 gets plugged into here, then it becomes, is that, it becomes negative 10 plus 21. Is that equal to 18? No, it's not. But when you take 3 and 4 and you plug it in for x, and for y, you get 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 4 is 12. Is that equal to 18? Yes, it is. So these are each no or yes kinds of questions. Graph the equation, and they give you some sort of equation. Uh, all you really need to do is make a table of values. The most important thing, or the one common mistake that most people make uh, that many people have made is that you take negatives and you write negative 3 squared and you uh, we all know that negative 3 times negative 3 is 9 but sometimes when you type it into a calculator or you just are not remembering everything that you need to remember uh, sometimes if you type in negative 3 squared into a calculator then it without the parentheses then it gives you negative 9 because it squares it first and then makes it negative so make sure that when you do that then this is positive 9 uh, and then you can see we have a huge long table. You plug in all these values and you get in the y values. Take the x and I just, uh, I more or less randomly generated these although I knew that if I picked uh, these all the way up to 12 we'd get a nice parabola here. So you can pick numbers, make sure you pick some negatives and, ne and some positives, plug them into the equation and get the y values out. And you should be able to plot these numbers. Connect the dots, label them, there they are. Pause it if you need more time, but I'm just going to move on. You can do the same thing even if you don't fully understand what the equation is going to look like, what the graph is going to turn out to be. Here it says graph xy equals 12. Just to make things a little bit easier for me while making the table, I divided both sides by x. So that I get y equals 12 divided by x. And so y is all by itself. This is going to be y equals 12 divided by 4 is 3. And you notice that 4 times 3 is 12, just like it asks in the original. What are all this, the set of all points that multiply up to 12? Well, here they are. 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 4 is 12. Negative 2 times negative 6 is still positive 12. The way that I calculate them, though, however, is when I generate the table, it's y equals 12 divided by 2 is 6. 12 divided by negative 1 is negative 12. Here, at 0, we get something very interesting. It's, uh, 12 divided by 0, well, anything divided by 0 is undefined. We just, we've constructed division in such a way that we don't have an answer to this question. What is 12 divided by 0? There is no answer. So what you can write is just undefined. And you can see here on the graph, there's actually there's a break in the graph. There's no value of y that can satisfy the 12 divided by 0 question. But the other points are here. We connect the dots, and, the other, and we can label them too.
So a relation is a collection of ordered pairs, and we saw that already on the table. The collection that we had is the ordered pairs that we produced and we connected the dots. In general, that's what a relation is. A domain is the collection of the relation's first coordinates. The range is the collection of the relation's second coordinates. I'm going to use blue and yellow to color code the rest of this section. Every time you see blue, that means it's an element in the domain, or it has to do with the domain, and yellow has to do with the range. So you can see here, 4 and 3, domain, range, domain, range, domain, range. I've collected all the y values here in the range, and all the x values here in the domain. The instructions say, shade the domain on the x-axis, and shade the range on the y-axis. We can write that the domain is all x such that they satisfy this condition, negative 5, is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 3. And you can see the domain right here, from negative 5 all the way up to positive 3. The range is going to be all the y values that satisfy this other condition, that the fact that they go between negative 3 and positive 2. You can see that here. They go from negative 3 all the way up to positive 2. Here, the domain is all x such that they go from negative 5 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to positive 5. The y values span negative 4 to positive 5. Now you might say, Bergman, what does all this mean? Right here, what is this line? It's what it's saying is that it's, it's creating a rule. This is the collection, the set, of all x values such that they satisfy this condition. So if your x value satisfies this condition, then it can be in the collection and it can be inside the set of all numbers. Here at 13, I want you to try number 13. Do it exactly the way we did the previous two. The collection of all x values, it's going to it's almost every single x value is represented here. Except for one of them, there's a break in the graph right in the middle, right here. The, all x values are represented except for the x value of 0. The domain is all x such that x is not equal to 0. The range is all y values, similarly, all that are not equal to 0. By the way, I just wanted to say that uh, as a quick fun fact, do you know that Honolulu is the capital of Hawaii? Have you been there? I've been there. It's awesome. You should go. Check it out. Honolulu is the capital of Hawaii, and that's your audio check. Here, uh, it maybe you can't see it in the graph, but this graph does go as high as you want and as low as you want if you keep on following out. So we can say that this graph has a range of all real numbers. This is the symbol for all real numbers. All real numbers. The way you draw this symbol is it's basically an R with an, with an additional vertical line right next to it. Now what about the domain? Where What x values are represented on this graph? Well, none of them that are negative values, and even between 0 and 1 there's no values there. It's because this is the graph of the equation y equals uh, x minus 1, or maybe we'll just call it plus or minus x minus 1. So really, when we're looking at this particular graph, although you and I know how to take the square root of a negative number, we don't really have a place to put imaginary numbers on this graph. So we have to consider all, all real numbers to be our solutions, and only real number solutions, no imaginaries. If that's the case, then we have to make sure that what's inside the parentheses does not go negative. x minus 1 has got to be greater than or equal to 0. It can be equal to 0 because the square root of 0 is 0, and that's fine. But if it gets negative, then that's where we go into imaginary land, which we can't graph right now. It's just real numbers that we're graphing. So we're going to add 1 to both sides to get x is greater than or equal to 1. And so the domain is going to be all x such that x is greater than or equal to 1. We can see that graphically here also. 
it, or it's allowed to be one right here and then any values that are greater as well so in short be careful whenever you have a fraction that could have a zero in the denominator or a negative in the square root that's when the domain gets restricted all right kitties it's play at home time with desmos what that means is when i do something on desmos you do it too make sure you can show me your saved desmos graphs when you arrive in class tomorrow I'd like you to begin 3A, so that means copy the problem list and do the first problem.